Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. Podcast, America's number one podcast for new real estate investors, where we know that finding discounted properties is the most proven path to financial freedom. I am your host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, Mr. Talk to People, and I am telling you this, if I can do it, so can you. So let's get started. This podcast is, this is going to be the perfect conversation for something that I have been talking about for the last four years. And that is if you start out and, and, you're, and you're building your real estate business and your portfolio and your experience, start out very simply by finding ugly houses and getting big checks. That's what, what I'm saying here is focus on just sourcing discounted properties, finding these properties and wholesaling them out, getting that income in so that you can then not go and spend it all, but pay off your debts and then invest that money into assets. And I've got the perfect example of this. He's going to give us an incredible blueprint on how to do this. Listen to this. He's done over 700 wholesale deals. He currently owns 88 doors. He's done 200 burrs, which is buying them, renovating them, renting them, and refinancing to pull his cash out. It is Mr. Burr Method himself, my great friend, David Dodge, on the show today. David, how are you, brother? I'm doing awesome, Brent. Thank you for having me, and thank you for those kind words, man. I love it. I love the strategy. I love what you're doing. You are now currently at 18,000 in passive cash flow a month from your investments. Not only that, but you're getting those all of those investments every single month are getting paid down lower and lower so your equity's increasing, appreciation's taking effect, uh, depreciation uh, affects your, your income taxes. I mean, you're doing all the right things. So how did you come to this? You were just a pilot like 10 years ago and now <laughs> you're a real estate mogul. So how does this happen and how do we do it as well? I appreciate that. So, you know, that's a really great question. You, you said a really great thing and, and an important thing. You know, we all should start by finding motivated sellers and buying discounts, Brent, you nailed it. And that's how I started too, right? Like, you know, when I went full time, that is, uh, I was like, I need to find these motivated sellers. I need to get discounts because, you know, if you don't have a discount, it's difficult to make money no matter what strategy you're using in real estate. If you have a discount on a property, it just makes everything so much easier. And I'm out of the Midwest. I'm out of St. Louis, Missouri. This market that I'm in, it's, it's a great market, but it's not a high price market by any means. And like you had mentioned, I've done hundreds and hundreds of wholesale deals. But in this market, the one I'm in, you know, 20, 30, 40 thousand dollar wholesale deals are kind of hard to come by. Sure. Um, of course, we can find those. I'm working on one right now that's about 40 grand. So it's an awesome one. Uh, but the average wholesale in my market is usually somewhere between, you know, maybe seven and twelve thousand. You know, that's Got a pretty it. standard average wholesale deal. And. If you have a team, you can do more deals, but you also have more overhead, right? And I was just kind of tired of being on the transactional treadmill. I think that's, you know, a great way to describe it. Like, you know, once you do a wholesale deal, it's great. You get paid, right? It builds confidence so you can go do more. But you're starting all over every time that you complete a deal. Yep. And I was just trying to figure out a way to, you know, make the money keep coming in as well as make money while I sleep. Yep. And that's just where, you know, landlording came in. So really it's landlording is the name of the game. And that's what my passion is. And the Burr method is really just a strategy to acquire a lot of real estate very quickly. And the coolest part is, is you can do it with little to none of your own money when you use this strategy. I love it. I was just looking around back here. I thought I had rich dad, poor dad uh, right here in my, uh, in my studio. It's usually here. It's somewhere around here. But I mean, that's what happens, right, David? We read this book. Robert Kiyosaki's talking about his rich dad, talking about all these assets that he owns, talking about, you know, he's driving an old truck. He's uh, living in a, in a, in a, 
a nice house, but nothing that's going to, you know, be called luxury. There it is. Rich dad, poor dad. Um, and he's just building up his assets. And that's truly, you know, there's a difference between being rich and being wealthy. You know, rich is that you, you make a lot of money. You've got a lot of money coming in. What are you doing with that money? Are you spending it? Is it going to interest payments for debt that you that you have, or is it going to investments? And we know, I mean, you you can look it up. Uh, anybody can look it up on, and it's worth the Google. Is you know how much of our year the average person in America? How much is it spent paying taxes and interest? You'll find out. It's January through October. <laughs> okay. January through October. So what do you do? Wow. You have to increase the amount of income that you have coming in and decrease the amount of interest that you're paying on your debts. Well, the best way that I have ever seen to be able to do that is to wholesale real estate, earn that 10, 20, $40,000, do that consistently. Then all of a sudden you're out of the rat race. You're able to do it full time if you weren't able to be able to do that before. And then you find, oh, wait, I just built an ATM machine. I just built a cash machine here. What do I do with it? You are saying, I'm going to go and I'm going to put the profits that I've done, that I've made from the 700 deals, wholesale deals that I've done, and I'm going to be buy, I'm going to go and buy properties. Not only am I going to buy properties, I'm going to buy them at a discount. I'm going to fix them up, rent them, and then I'm going to refinance and get those funds out of those properties. And in, in most cases, I would assume I'll let you kind of yep. give me the whole breakdown of that process. And now you've got that money to go put into another property. And That's this is exactly how you build right. up a huge portfolio, right? That's exactly right. I mean, the, the best thing about using the Burr method to buy rental properties is that you can do it with other people's money. You can yep. literally do this 100% with other people's money. In fact, the last 100 properties that we've that we've used the Burr method on, and I don't own all of them, of course. I, I sell them off turnkey occasionally, but I love keeping them, of course. Um, we've done with none of our own money. So we'll always borrow all of it, the purchase, the rehab, the holding costs, the closing costs. In some cases, I may even borrow an additional five or 10,000. We'll go rehab that property, make it look pretty. We'll get it rented. And then we'll go back to the bank and we'll pay the lenders back. And it's just the most amazing strategy ever. So let me ask you this, David. So you've made a bunch of money doing wholesale. Why not just fund it yourself? Why, why even raise funds? Is it you want to do more? You want to go oh, that faster? Is a, that is a fantastic question. So I don't like using my own money on any of my deals. And there's a really specific reason for that, Brent. The reason is, is banks don't like to do cash out refinances. Um, it's, it's harder to, to do cash out refinances. They're going to typically lend a little less when they do a cash out refinance. So if I have my own cash in the deal, it, it basically is a cash out. Whereas if I borrow it from a private lender or a hard money lender, now I'm walking into the bank and I'm not asking for a new purchase loan. I'm asking for them to pay back an existing loan. So they're not really creating you know, new risk. They're just transferring the risk. And I found that if I use my own money, it's, it's not as easy to get as much of it out or as you know the 80% essentially out. Whereas if I borrow it from somebody else, um, I can get it all back. And then the second reason is, is my funds are limited. You know, I could maybe afford to do four or five of these at a time, but if I want to do 20 at a time, which I'm doing right now, I need to leverage other people's money. Yep. And when you do, where are you getting this money from? Like, so I have somebody, somebody listening is like, Hey, um, I would love to do this. Where is he getting his money? Like, yeah, is I love it. So family? Is is it part. other banks? Yeah, yeah. So all of my money comes from to purchase comes from two places. It comes from private lenders who I have met 100 percent of them at local real estate clubs, 100 percent, Brent. And the other is hard money lenders who I also met at real estate clubs. So get out there and go to the local RIAs. You will meet these people. And that's where I get the money to purchase. And then, of course, on the refinance, that's typically going to be a local bank or a local credit union. Um, although I have started working with some of these national lenders as well, but I prefer the local banks. And so what does that conversation go? Uh, how, how does that unfold? You're at a real estate club. You meet somebody that you know is doing well or that lends money. What's the conversation? Oh, yeah. I mean, typically... 
I don't even have to go to the real estate clubs and like seek out these lenders. What I'll typically do is I'll show up with deals that I'm trying to sell. Right. And in the beginning of most of the clubs, they'll, they'll have kind of like a like a once a once in needs or, or a give. Right. And you get up in front of the group with the microphone and I'll typically say, hey, I got this deal that I'm trying to sell. And then towards the you know end of the of the meeting, people will approach me and they'll, and they'll want more interest about this deal. And then at that point, I just open up the conversation like, hey, I get deals all the time and my passion is really keeping them. It's burying these deals. Although sometimes we'll wholesale them. And basically it's just me making friends with people, right? People want to work with those they know, like, and trust, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't typically try to approach some random stranger and say, hey, will you give me a loan? Instead, I'll do a deal or two with them first and get them to know me, get them to like me, get them to trust me. And then I'll take them out to lunch or I'll open up that conversation about, hey, do you have any extra money laying around you want to put to work? So are you telling me, that the secret key to unlocking the door to pretty much unlimited finances is to find deals. Absolutely. It is 100%. That's what we're talking about. That is wholesaling ink. People think that wholesaling is only means one thing. And that means assigning your interest in a contract to somebody else for a fee. That is not what wholesaling is. Wholesaling is the art of finding discounted properties. That's what it is. The exit strategy that you use is uh, is up to you. You can assign it to somebody, you can take it down and flip it, or you can keep it in your portfolio. There's three options. There's That's really right. only three options there. So wholesaling is truly finding those deals. But well, what what David is is giving a, a real life uh, example of is listen, if you have these deals, you're not going up to people empty handed, you're going out with opportunities, you're building a relationship, you earn money for people that have money, they will lend you money. And that's the thing about the private lenders is once I pay them back, they're like, well, can I give it right back to you? They want to keep that money, making them money. So, you know, it started out with just one, one lender. Yep. And at this point, I think I maybe have seven or eight at any given time. Um, I also use some hard money lenders as well. The private lenders are better because it's it's less underwriting. It's a text message or an email or a phone call. The, the rates are a little are a little cheaper. Um, but there's certain reasons that you'd also want to use a hard money lender as well because you know let's say you're like I just bought a, a 23 unit apartment building and you know I'm going to be all into this thing for about 950 thousand and most of my lenders only have you know two three four hundred thousand. So I didn't want to have to pool for multiple lenders. I just went and I went and I paid a higher rate, of course, with the high with the hard money lender. But it's easier to be able to get it from you know one place. So all of these lenders, Brent, I met these people at RIA's. I sold them deals or I bought one of their wholesale deals. And the funny thing is, is most of my lenders are also real estate investors. Obviously, they were at RIA clubs, but they're also typically a little older. Not yep. old, old, but, you know, maybe in like their their 50s or 60s. Some of our lenders are even in their 40s, of course. And they don't have the energy that us young guys have, but they have the money. Whereas we have the energy and maybe not the money. And they would much rather invest into somebody like us that has good energy and knows what they're doing. And the best thing about the private lenders as well, too, you know, from their perspective is if we screw up, which we have never done. Right. But if we do, it's backed by the property we bought. And you mentioned it earlier. We're not buying retail properties. We're buying deals. So it's kind of funny in a way, but like if I did screw up for whatever reason, my lender would be like, cool, give me that deal. Right. It's awesome. Love it. Oh yeah. I mean, they went, you know, it's really interesting. You win in so many different ways as a lender. And I understand that now because now I'm at that point, David. Mm -hmm. So so it, literally, like I have, you were just saying, sometimes it's a text message or a call. I'll get a text message from Luke Rotvold with the Viking boys, and they do incredible things. And he was part of my company for three and a half years, and I know their track record. They make it just a, a ton. They have a ton of assets, whatever it is. Boom, I send over the wire and I send over the paperwork for the personal guarantee and we're done. That's it. That's it. 
and I get a 10% return plus a little bit extra. So uh, it's, I mean, it's, it, it's incredible. I, I just, the reason I bring that up to everybody is everybody can get to that point. That's listening to this, but it starts with just finding discounted properties. Finding those properties is, is the foundation of all the other things that you want to do in this business. And it's going to give you the track record and expertise to where you can confidently have a conversation with people that have those funds and ask them for uh, the opportunity to use their funds to do some exciting things for your own business. And then what you're doing is, so you're, you're getting that loan on the property and then you're replacing that loan with a conventional loan and, 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 and getting a much lower interest rate on that, that makes your properties cash flow. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Some conventional loans. Most of my loans are actually commercial loans Sure. because they're in LLCs, but regardless, yeah, we're getting loans to do so. And in the beginning, you know, I was going out seeking these people, buying deals from them or selling them deals and then open up in that conversation. But the thing is, Brent, is over time when you do, you know, let's say you borrow money from somebody and you pay them back and you do that 10, 20, 30 times. Well, all of a sudden you build up a lot of credibility with that person. And then that person may have a friend who's got a bunch of money and then they want to get in. And before you know it, you have seven to 10 people hitting you up like, hey, I need to put some money to work. So it's kind of crazy, but I I have more private lender money available than I can typically even utilize. Yep. You know, and it just snowballs. But again, you got to start by finding those deals, Brent. You nailed it. That's where it all starts, no matter and what. I'll, I'll give a pro tip for everybody out there that's raising funds. The best time to do it is when there is rumblings or when they actually make the adjustments to the interest rates. When interest rates go up, investors typically pull their money out of the market because they know that there's going to be a dip and they're timing it. So they need to put their money somewhere. There's a great opportunity. So as we're in 2022 here and you hear grumblings of interest rates going up, Watch how much private money is going to be raised. It's going to be absolutely bananas. Get on your horse right now. Start taking action. Start finding opportunities if your goal is to build a robust rental portfolio. Because that's what it is, right, David? I mean, everybody, I, I don't know a single person. And, and I talk to a lot of people and I coach a lot of people around the country that wants to build a wholesaling business to just be a wholesaler. No, no it's, to... a, it's a great entry. And in because it teaches you how to talk to sellers, Mr. TP, TTP. I love it. Talk to, talk to people, right? Talk to the sellers. That's what it teaches you. It teaches you how, how to get out there and run appointments and how to get comfortable and how to get people to know, like, and trust you, right? And how to, how to get deals. And then once you get deals, you're going to want to pivot or transition into, you know, kind of like a 2.0 or a, a 3.0 as the investor. So always start with deal finding, always start with wholesaling. And, you know, we have a little model of motto at the office here and we keep the best deals that come in and we wholesale the rest. So we're still wholesaling tons and tons of deals, but the best ones you can cherry pick. And that's what you should do once you, you know, are at that level. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. What are the best ones? What makes one the best and what makes one the rest? That is such a fantastic question. And the way I define that, Brent, is what's best for you and your business at the current time. So it's not necessarily, oh, it's a three bedroom, two bath, right? Or it's a great deal. Sometimes Cash gets tight, right? We have a yep. rehab that goes over budget or in my case, 20, right? So sometimes the best thing to do is to wholesale, to make some money, to bring in the door. Other times we may be sitting on six figures and we're just like, well, we don't really need to wholesale right now. Let's go buy some more rentals. So I love that question because it's what's best for you and your business at the time that the deal is presented to you. And if it makes sense to keep it to where you can get paid in your sleep, and create financial freedom, which is what I love to do, then keep it. But yeah. if money is tight and things are slow, wholesale it. You have options. So this isn't a specific locations. We're going to keep all these. This is so a timing. A box, of course. 
And if it's in the buy box, which is really just a set of parameters that make for good rental properties, right? So so, it, so break that down. What makes a good rental property? Oh, absolutely. This, so, this, I mean, we could do another three hours on this. Oh, but absolutely. Let, oh, let, yeah. let, let's, let's keep this, you know, specific. Like what makes a good rental property in, in, in your business? I love it. Great question. So what makes for a good rental property in my business that I would consider adding to the portfolio and using the Burr method? Because that's what I always want to do. I want to do this with none of my own money, right? Yep. So the deals that I love to keep are deals that are going to have a minimum of $20,000 worth of equity, which is wealth creation, right? As well as $300 minimum cash flow. So those are the, the financial pieces, right? I need sure. to make at least 20 grand worth of wealth or equity and at least $300. That's cash flow, meaning what's left at the end of the month after you collect the rent and pay the bills. On top of that, I don't want to be driving two hours to be managing a rental property. So typically it's going to be about 30 minutes from where, where I work at my office. And then on top of that, we don't want to buy anything that's too small or too big or strange because at some point we're going to probably have to sell these properties. Right. So we don't want to be buying little one bedroom, 400 square foot houses. You know, the ideal property is, you know, three bed, two bath, maybe even four bed, but we're not really typically buying five bed or six bed. We're not buying one bed. It's, you know, it's basically just a very, very standard type of a home. And of course we need to get a deal on it. Right. Yep. So one last thing I'd mention without having to go on for hours, of course, would be we love the 1% rule. And if a property hits the 1% rule, it is basically guaranteed to cash flow at least $250 to $300 a month, right? And that's going to obviously depend on the loan that you go with. Uh, but the 1% rule is a great rule. So let's say that I can find a property that I can buy at $80,000 and it needs $20,000 worth of work and I'm all in it for $100,000. Will it rent for at least a thousand a month? And if so, right. that's one percent. And ideally, you can be at or above one percent. So my portfolio is is averaging about one point two to one point three percent on average. Hmm. That's incredible. Are you looking at certain price points? Yeah, that's a really great question. We don't like to buy properties, and, and I say buy. I really mean be all in. Um, under 50,000 because no bank wants to do a loan that small, right? Right. So we're always looking for all in. Now we may buy a property for 50 that needs 30 and be in at 80, but that property should appraise for, you know, 120, 130, right? Right. So uh, being all in above 50 is basically the minimum. And then, you know, in my market here in St. Louis, the average rental that we have rents for somewhere around maybe 1,200, 1,300. Um, so I don't typically shoot for these rentals that are 1800 or 2200 or 2500 because then the, the, the amount's going to be higher. Now, you can make those work, of course. Uh, but for me, the sweet spot's typically somewhere between 90 and 130,000 all in. And then the goal is to be all in purchase, rehab, holding, closing, all of that stuff, right? At 80% or less than what it will appraise for. Because if you can do that and you can hit those metrics, Brent, you can do this with none of your own money. You can borrow it. You can fix it up, make it nice. You can get it rented and then you can go to that bank. And if you do it right, and there's a process to it, right? It's not just as easy as buying something and fixing it up and getting it rented. You got to buy it at a discount and there's certain ways to fix it up and to do it right. And there's, you know, definitely techniques when it comes to the renting as well. And we teach all that at Burr Method Mastery, right? But whenever we go to get the refi, we're getting loans on the appraisal. And if we're all in, at 80% or less, that means that we're going to be able to get a loan to pay back that private lender or that hard money lender. And we're not going to have a dollar, not a nickel, not a dime, not a penny of our own money invested in that deal in the end. And you put it into something else. And then you just borrow that money again and you keep going. And that's the great thing about this, this method is it's so scalable. So, you know, right now, I think I have 18 rehabs going, maybe, maybe even 20. Right. Because you have there's four steps to this thing. Now, this is not something that you can do in two weeks. Right. It, it's going to take you a couple months to get through this entire process. But that's OK because it's scalable. So I may have four or five deals in the buy, 
you know, in the purchase stage and we're waiting on these to close. And then I may have four or five or six, or in my case, 15 or 20 properties that are being rehabbed, right? And then once those are rehabbed, we may have two or three or four that are, you know, being leased out by our property management. And then once we get them leased out, then we may have two or five or whatever it may be that are being ready to be refied. So it's really, really scalable. And that's what I love about it. Single family versus townhouses versus condos versus multifamily. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No. So I, I've done this with over 200 single family homes. I own 60 plus as of right now. Uh, we've done this with duplexes, triplexes, five, six, seven units. I bird a, a 10 unit about a year ago. And right now I'm working on a 24 unit that I'm going to be burring. So you can do this at scale. I mean, I know guys that are doing this with two and 300 unit apartment buildings. It's really, it doesn't matter. The main thing though, is what you said right out of the gate. You got to buy these deals at discounts. Yep. And that's where the wholesaling comes in. It's the marketing. If you get a really good discount, and you use some of these, you know, proven methods and strategies, you can do this with none of your own money, Brent. And let's talk about uh, the Burr Method Mastery because, uh, exciting, you have joined the Wholesaling Inc. coaching team. That's and, right. And uh, you, are, you are let loose. I mean, it is, it is the next step first. You come in, you talk to people, you get uh, you get a bunch of deals, you get a bunch of money, you get a bunch of experience, and then what do you do with it? You start burring properties and building your portfolio. So talk to me about the Burr Method Mastery, uh, the coaching, and you also have a book that you wrote. I mean, this is like, this is not some fly-by-night thing for you. This isn't some, yeah, I'm doing this on the side. This is your life. Yeah, this is my life, guys. I mean, I... My goal has always been to retire by the time I'm 40. I'm 37 and I'm basically there, right? Yep. I make money while I sleep because of my rental portfolio. My portfolio is being paid down and paid off by my tenants. It cash flows in the excess of $18,000 a month. And you said this earlier as well. It has massive tax benefits. Like Brent, I barely even pay taxes. Like I don't right. even know how it's how it's legal, but it is. It's 100% legal and fair, but there is massive, massive tax benefits with it. So it's, I mean, it is, it is truly my passion to keep building my portfolio, obviously, but also to share and teach and help and coach other people to be able to achieve financial freedom. That's, Brent, that's what we all get into real estate for, is it not? That's we it. leave our jobs because we want to work less, make more money, and hopefully create financial freedom, right? But what happens typically? Not always, but typically somebody's leaving that 40-hour-a-week job to go work 60. And that's okay because you got to hustle. you got to learn this business. But after you do that for two or three or four years, it gets exhausting, right? Yep. You're essentially on a transaction treadmill. And the beautiful thing about being a landlord is, is that you can get off of that treadmill and you can start making money passively, which is taxed less than the earned income, but also you're making it while you sleep. And as you build the portfolio, you make more and more and you can do it, like I said, with none of your own money. So the goal is just to create financial freedom. And that's really what Bird Method Mastery is all about. It's helping people create financial freedom because if you can get financial freedom then you can also achieve time freedom and that's really what is the most sought after thing that i can think of being able to have the freedom to go do whatever i want i'm getting to go i'm going to be with you next week in mexico i can't wait that's right and if i didn't have financial freedom and time freedom i wouldn't be able to do those things so what does what what makes the burr method mastery Better than just buying a book or watching YouTube videos or whatever else. Love you know it. what I mean? Like, that's Oh my God, that is a great question. So yeah. when I first started doing Burr at scale about four years ago, I was leaving 20 grand in a property, 15 grand in a property. And then after six, eight, 10 months, I figured out a way to maybe only leave eight or $10,000 in a property. And it basically took me about... 18 months, maybe even as much as two full years to really master the Burr method, right? And there's certain things that you want to do to do it right. And there's certain things that you want to avoid 
to, to, to not have to leave money in it, right? So in the, in the program, birdmethodmastery.com, what we do is we teach you how to do it the right way from the beginning so you're not spinning your wheels and leaving fifteen dollars or $20,000 in a property out the gate. My goal is, is to get people to do these deals right away with none of their own money and then obviously be able to scale it to where they can do multiple at the same time. Great awesome. question. BurrMethodMastery.com. Burr is with four R's. That's right. Right. BurrMethodMastery.com. If you guys are just listening to this, um, then that's that's where you go. If you guys are watching this on the Brent Daniels YouTube channel, we'll put all the links down below and you guys can check that out. Well, awesome, David. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that uh, that you're part of Wholesaling Inc., the Rhino Tribe, and you're going to be you're going to be helping out a lot of people build a lot of wealth. So I love it, man. I love you. Thank you for being on here. You're the best. Thank you, Brent. All right. And that's it, everybody. Uh, what an incredible, I, I, I'm telling you, you know, everybody that I talk to in this business that is starting out, the goal is financial freedom, just like David was saying. And really what that means is control of your schedule, control of the rest of the time that you have uh, on this planet. And it's so critical and it's so precious. And I think it's worth that grind, that one year, two year, three year, seven year grind of working and building and challenging yourself to be a real estate entrepreneur. Because at the end of that, at the end of that tunnel is that financial freedom, is that control of your schedule. And I'm, I'm not just saying that as hyperbole. That's just what happens. You, you, you build up your reputation. You build a business that finds incredible discounted properties. And when you do that, you have so many different options. So I encourage everybody. And that's it. Thank you for watching and listening to this podcast. I am Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP. I love you. And I encourage you as always to go out there and talk to people. See you next time.